Hello everyone, I am back and I kind of changed my setup so it's kind of sideways but I could not work around that tripod so I hope this is okay with you guys. Um, what I wanted to show you was um, if you did not know how to do this, I'm just going to um, show you how I'm going to take this shirt apart. I'm sure you guys all know this but like I said I want to try to do everything step by step. Um, uh, because I do know there's a few of you that don't know how to do this just because you've told me. So this is beginner stuff for the rest of you. Um, but this is the shirt and it's, you know, really faded through here. Like I said, this was my grandpa's and I remember him wearing this shirt. It just brings back so many memories. Um, I will keep all these buttons and what I'm going to do, um, and yes, I know I'm a little weird, but <laughs> I'm going to keep all these buttons separate. Um, these will go in a little jar that will have a label saying they're my grandpa's buttons. So that way I know they're his. And I will use a few of these um, in this journal in particular. That way some of these buttons get put in the journal. Um, but what I'm gonna do is the whole backside has got the largest uh, piece without a seam. And that's gonna be the, the one I work with because this of course has the pocket, which would be really nice um, for a journal. Um, but it's not big enough, and this one, of course, isn't either, and of course it is, um, I'm hoping you guys can see, it's, um, all faded over here, so what I'm gonna do is use this here, and I'm hoping that I can rip this just like we do our other fabric, um, I'm hoping, but if we can't, let's see, I need to get past that seam, I'm hoping I can do this because... Um, I do all my other fabric this way. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to rip it up like this. And then that way I can go back and cut it later. I'm trying to decide if I want to use my um, heat and bond for my cover. Um, I'm not even sure what size it's going to be yet. Um, that's, you know, something i got to figure in. Um, I literally just stopped the other video and just started this one. So, um, if you've watched the last video, you know that um, it was just the introduction to this. And I literally just went ahead and started into this one. Because that's the way these are going to be. They're just going to be back to back because I am working on this journal. And um, I've got to get it done. So, it's probably just going to be same day back to back stuff. Okay. So I'm going to put this to the side. Um, and so this is the piece we got to work with now, which is a good piece of material. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I did this. Well, it's okay. Like she took so much of his clothes to, um, she donated a bunch of them, which, you know, is nice. Other people... I've got a lot of really nice clothes that he never wore and stuff, so that was good. Um, oh, that was Randy's arm. Okay. I was trying to see what that was. I'm just going to cut this bottom off here. I don't need that. Um, I love the frayed edge. Was it not? Oh, okay. That one little piece. Okay, I'm just going to cut that. So I'll put that right there. Okay, so now we have a good size piece here of fabric um, that I can use. And see, even this is, if you notice down here, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but it is even faded out here, and then down here it's not. So I'll probably, I want to try to stick to the top. Well, this was actually the top of the shirt, but I want to stick to this part of the fabric right here. So, now I've got my shirt prepared and my fabric uh, piece. This is what I call it, my shirt, my fabric's prepared here. So, that's the way um, I want that. And then I know, you know, how much fabric I have, um, what it's going to look like. And it's more manageable now for me to fold around and look at as more as a journal cover. So I have 
some paper here. Let me pull a piece of paper out. Because I'm going to use a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock um, for a like a template. Um, don't think I'll use that for the cover. I'm probably going to use fabric for the cover. Oh, that's so pretty, though. Ooh, look at that. Um, I, well, not the cover, guys. I'm sorry. The inside cover is what I'm talking about. Um, just ignore me if you catch me making mistakes. You know what I'm talking about. That one's pretty, too. I really like this one. I'm going to go ahead and use this for the inside just in case. I bet it's, it's mainly just for a template, but I want it to match. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to fold this directly in half, which gives us six inches. And, um... So we got six inches wide, which is, you know, we wouldn't go any wider than that to begin with. Um, I wonder if that's, yeah, it's darker. That was the inside. Um, up here. I was almost backwards again. Okay, so it would be like, and this is just the way I work. You know, everybody is different. Everybody works different. Um, that frayed edge would need to be done again, for an example. That's not a good frayed edge because up here, there's a chunk out of it and then it starts fraying really big. Right here is a better frayed edge from here to here, if you can see that. So that makes a difference to me. So just for that reason, this would need to be redone. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece again, a larger piece. Actually, I shouldn't cut that large, but I'm gonna fray another piece so that way I get a better fray here and so then of course we start um, you always where you cut you're gonna get a straighter piece but it frayed really good I'm surprised so then I'm just gonna take out these oh my poor nails um, take out these extras and see, you can see the difference now. Um, I had someone commenting on my Christmas journal I just made, and they were talking about how they like, oops, sorry guys, how they like the frayed edge on the journal. And you can see that right there. So here, let me reach in front of you. Uh, okay, so this is the Christmas journal, and I posted this on social media, and you can see the frayed edge right there. I love doing that to my journals. And so I just left the, um, well, of course I did it on purpose. So I wanted the frayed edge. And so I had to make sure that when I went around, I did it like this. I made sure all my frayed edges were, you know, nice and neat because you can get, you know, really bad frayed edge like we just had. So I do check my frayed edges now. Right here, if you look, and if I straighten this out, you're gonna see the frayed edge goes up and around. That's because the arm was there. But we're not using that, that part anyway, so I'm gonna leave it. I don't wanna tear no more fabric off because we're only gonna use this top part. And of course, I need to decide if I leave it six inches wide, which I might, I wanna decide how long I want it and I would cut the paper and to, just to get a template and then I would know exactly you know, where my paper would be, I mean, where my fabric would go, and then what size my journal is, and then I could kind of cut the, the fabric down, and then we could kind of work around with the fabric placement of everything else. Where am I at here? Okay, I could have a drink, guys, I'm sorry. So, I want, I'm probably gonna go I don't know if I want to go. Let's start with nine, and then we'll work our way down if I want, because um, I'm about to knock that off my desk, right into the trash can. <laughs> that would be lovely. All that ephemera. Let's see. Let's take this part down. So I'm going to start with nine inches here, and take it down to that, and then... Um, see. 
And I just feel like that's too big for what I'm what I'm going for here. I mean, I really think the six inches is too big. So I'm gonna go into five and a half. Um, and this is just the way I work. And I just, you know, I'm here showing you guys my process. So I'm gonna go to eight and a half. So I'm not liking the nine. And I'm just gonna go back to my eight and a half. This is my, and I think I'm gonna do the five. Is it five and a half? The five and a half. What is our standard? It's what, four and a... See, I can't even remember this. I mean, that's how bad my brain fog is right now. So if I fold a piece of paper over, it's what? I can't even remember that. It is almost five and a half. That's what I thought. So this will fit good in the five and a half. So that's where I'm gonna leave that. That way I can just fold my paper over. So I'm gonna leave my cover at five and a half by eight and a half. That's what I'm gonna do, my cover. And I think that's a good, good size cover right there. So that's what I'm gonna do with my cover. And I don't feel like that's too big. Um, it might be for what I'm putting in it, but I'm gonna try to make it work. I work better with smaller journals, but um, I want her to have room. And I want her to be able to see everything. And I love this paper. It works so well with this fabric. But we'll see. I don't know. Because I really was going to do. Um, well, no. I still have to have the cardstock. So, yeah. I guess I do have to have that. Okay. I'm trying to work while I. Uh, one, while it's early. It's only. What time is it? It's like. I can't see because I'm on my phone. It's still early. It's like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I guess. And by evening time, my brain starts shutting down on me. <laughs> and I cannot think at all. So, so then what I do is I'm going to line this up. And I don't know why I'm working around the tripod. I don't have to. So, I'm hoping you guys can see me okay. Alright. So, what I do next is I'm going to... I'm not going to adhere it yet, but I'm just going to show you how I would get ready to measure this. Um because I tear everything, and I do want this to stay, um, what's it called? I, I've said it a hundred times today. This ruffly stuff, um, frayed edge. Okay, I want that around the whole journal. So, what I'm looking at is to where I'm going to tear it. Try to get straight. Where I'm going to tear it, and I need this end here, so i got to move this stuff out of my way. I've got stuff down here where you can't see it, but it's there. Okay, so i got to see if I lay it here. And the problem is you have to try to get it right the first time. Because if you tear it, rip it, whatever, wrong the first time. And let's say, that looks like it's not even ripped right right there. That does not look like a good rip. See down here, that's a perfect one. It's even, and then here it changes or something. Let's go with this way. So if you rip it wrong here and you get too long, it is hard to go back and just rip just a tiny piece. I mean, it really is. And I know that you girls know what I'm talking about. So I have got to get this right the first time. And you don't want to rip it too short either because then you have nothing to um, stick out. So this is where I'm always like very scared I'm going to mess up. So we're going to see what I did here. Um, I just barely cut any. Let's see if I can get this ripped. Come on. There we go. out the way it was so I'm gonna have to work from this end because it had the better edge for some reason this didn't look right okay so we don't need that now we all only have this piece here so let's see if this oh yeah oh yay yay 
Okay, so if you look, now I'm hoping you can see, that is even all the way around with my fray. Oh, yay. So now, <laughs> I'm gonna do it again this way. So I've got it where I want it, up here. Is that coming out? Yeah, okay. So now I have to do it here. So, make sure it's all even, okay. All that fabric for that. <laughs> oh, that whole shirt, and I just needed that, right? Okay, so let's see. Did I get it? Oh, goodness, I did. Okay, look at that, guys. Yay, yay, yay. So there's the cover of the journal. Um, now, some people, of course, do other ways. And I've done where you cover the whole journal, and you put fabric inside, and... You know, I've done many, many different journals. This is just the way I'm doing this journal. Um, so, yeah. That's it. that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it just like I did my Christmas. Well, not exactly like I did my Christmas journal. It was a traveler's notebook. But it just totally changed while I was sitting here. And this is what I'm going to do. So, now that fits really, really good. Look at that. So, now I have different options from here on how to adhere it. Where am I at on time? Okay. So, I gotta have a drink, guys. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, so, you can use Fabri-Tac. People like Fabri-Tac. Um, I've always liked Fabri-Tac, but it seeps through your fabric. So, you gotta be careful. Um, now, I plan on sewing, so therefore, I can't use Fabri-Tac. Um... So you can take a glue stick um, and just tack it around enough to go over to the sewing machine, which is what I usually do. I always open it like this and I will use the glue stick for here, which I'll just do right now, because I can't sew while we're, uh, I'm recording because my sewing machine is way over there, which I'm hoping to change that. Oops, did that move? That moved. See how easy that moved? Let me fix it. So, um, I just tack it like this for that reason exactly. Still not even. Uh, let's try and try again. Now, is that right? There's more over here than over here. Yep. Yep. Okay. Let me lay this back down. <laughs> Try it again. Okay. What was I saying? I have no clue what I was saying. Um, but I'm going to let this glue stick dry before I sew. But anyway, I want to just sew so I couldn't use my fabric tack. That was one thing I was saying. But you can use Fabri-Tac. You can also use 3-in-1, um, which is what I prefer. Um, but it still, again, is going to seep through. So just be careful with the amount you use, especially if you're going to sew. If you are going to sew, you can still use it. Just don't go up to the edge of your fabric where you are going to sew. Um, just, you know, use it in here and then leave your edge free and sew here. It does gum up your machine. Um... You can use um, Heat and Bond, which is really nice. It gives you a really nice um, a finish on your journal. I've used it. I like using it, though, on my, like, little golden books. That's, you know, type things. Or just a book in general. Um, can't find my... Okay, forget it. Can't find my... <laughs> my... Um, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean. My thingy jigger. Um, so I'll use this. But anyway, yeah, there's all kinds of ways that you can um, adhere this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over and I will sew around it. Um, make sure that this is... Let 
Make sure you don't have any wrinkles either. Just pull it taut like that. There we go. See, look at that. Nice, nice. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do is I will let that dry. Not very long, I mean like, you know, until I get off here. And um, then I'll go around and sew around this. Actually, will I? No, maybe I won't. Actually, no, I won't. That's where I jump ahead because I need to actually figure out the rest of the cover. So, used to, I would jump off here and I would go sew around it and realize I didn't need to sew around it yet because I had other things I needed to do first. So, actually, I'm going to stop the video here and I'm going to start planning from here what I'm going to do with the cover. So, as far as... Um, you know, my grandmother's picture where it's going to, or my grandparents, where they're going to go, if I'm going to use the doily, um, if I'm going to use any kind of um, linens or, you know, embroideries or anything like that and get that figured out, then I will come back on and show you my next step. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys. You guys have a blessed day and I'll see you soon. Bye.